anyway, um, so you guys have the recipes in front of you. I'm going to start on the one recipe because just because we need to get it started. And this recipe is actually a Persian dish. Um, it's called adas polo in uh, English. It's basically a lentil rice salad, a lentil salad, and we add dates to it and raisins to it. And it's got saffron and it's got spices and everything. And it's absolutely delicious. Um, but we're going to not use the salt and we're not going to use the oils and we're not going to use all the meat and everything like that. We're going to make it nice and healthy for you guys. So if you've got um, a Trader Joe's that's close by to you, this is, this is the bag that we use. It's called brown rice medley and it's super easy. It's delicious. If you're avoiding wheat, I suggest not to use this and you could do this with, with just you know regular brown rice. And what you would do is you would cre uh, cook the green lentils first and then cook the brown rice and then you could combine everything together and add all your spices and go that route. But if you're okay with eating wheat, then this blend is absolutely delicious. So we've got some that's already washed. If you can give me the, um, the lentils and the brown rice and then the water, please. Thank you to my great assistant here, Susan. Let's give her a warm applause for helping me. <laughs> Thank you so much. So. Six, I, somebody just said it, 16. So what you always want to do is make sure that you wash and rinse your rice out of the bag. It's just sometimes there's like these dust particles that are in there. There might be dirt in there. So it's a great idea to always go ahead and rinse it. So we're going to put that in the pot. These are my type of recipes that they're just basically, you just dump it in here and go. Uh, these are the green lentils that you could use brown lentils, you could use green lentils, whichever one you prefer is fine. And we're just going to rinse that and it's already been rinsed and we're going to put that in the pot. Now here's the trick. Inside your rice cooker, there's numbers along the inside. The water, because we're adding we're adding uh, the lentils to this, the water ratio is going to be a little bit different. So you want to make sure that your water is at four and a half. So like right at that sweet spot between four and five. So I can't, okay, there we go. I can see it now. So we're going to add the water. And I'm going to need a little bit more. So right about there. And that's really about it. And we're going to close the lid. We're going to turn this on. Is this on? This isn't coming on. So give us a second, please. Ah, there we go. OK. And then you're just going to hit the brown rice button. And that's it. And how easy is that? This is, I got this from Costco. It was on sale for like $24.99. Um, and it's called the Aroma. It's, it's really a good rice cooker. You can do quinoa in here. You can use brown rice in here. You could do your steam your vegetables in here. You could do potatoes in here. You could do I, th this, this little machine. I get more use out of this. Between this and my Instant Pot, I don't know which one I use more. So the next part to this rice is going to be the lentils and no, not the lentils, the uh, the dates and the raisins. So we're going to take this and turn it on. And what we want to do here is over medium heat. There we go. How many of you guys are familiar with saffron? Good. This stuff is great, right? This is like gold. It's super, super good. Can I just get, can I have that little bowl right there, please? So we're going to make saffron water. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to take a little bit of saffron. Oops, that's way too much. 
This is, I believe so, from Trader Joe's, correct. And what you wanna do when you get them in these threads like this, you wanna take it and grind it a little bit so that it becomes like a powder. You don't want it um, in a thread like, um, because it, it, it doesn't break up very well. Then we're gonna take a little bit of hot water, pour that in there, and then we're gonna make saffron water. How easy is that? And that's how you make it. So when the, when the threads are ground, it makes it a little bit more, you know, it'll dissolve just a little bit better. So we're gonna take, for this recipe, um, I, I, I'm not sure if I wrote the uh, medjool dates on there or the deglet nor, but the deglet nor actually works better in this recipe because it's a little drier. The medjool dates are really super soft, so it makes it a little bit sticky when you're trying to chop it up and add it in here. But the deglet nor, and especially if you put them in the refrigerator, it gets cold, it's, it's a lot easier. So I've taken probably about, I don't know, about 10 deglet nor dates and I've chopped them up. We're gonna put that in here. And we're also gonna get, you can get raisins or currants, but just make sure that there's no oil. Make sure that the package says sun-dried, because lately they're putting oil on raisins even, and it's really, I don't understand why, but they're doing it. Can I give that to you? No, that, we're gonna save that. So we're gonna take our saffron water, and we're gonna pour it on here. And we're gonna saute this just a little bit with the saffron water. And this process really is for just for a few minutes. It's not, you know, you're, you're not trying to cook it, you're not trying to do anything. You're just wanting to get the flavors to incorporate in here. And that's really about it for this portion of it. Again, just very quick saute, nothing, nothing long. And that's it. We're gonna turn that off and then we're gonna put that aside until the rice is ready. And once the rice is ready, then we're gonna add our spices to the rice and then we're gonna add this to the rice and we're gonna let everything incorporate and oh, you guys are in for a treat tonight for, for this dish. They've done an absolutely fabulous job in cooking this. So this portion of this I don't need. Um, and let's see. Now we're, I'm gonna move on to the next recipe which is the quinoa salad. Oh, and by the way, let me just go over the, the spices that, that go in there. It's uh, cinnamon, black pepper, cardamom, cumin, turmeric, and saffron. And now, I've given you a baseline as to how much to put in of, of each spice, but let's say you like more cardamom, add a little bit more. If you like more cinnamon, add a little bit more cinnamon. So these are just little guidelines that I've given you, but you certainly can add you know, you can adjust on the seasonings to your taste. So don't, don't hesitate to do that. I'm gonna um, put my gloves on and we're gonna start. How many of you guys like quinoa? Quinoa is absolutely wonderful. It's high in protein, extremely nutritious because you know, everybody's always asking us, where are you getting your protein? As if any of us are protein deficient. And I'm wondering, we could ask the doctors here, like Dr. Gershfeld, have you ever seen anybody being protein deficient? Yeah, no. So, <laughs> so that's always their biggest question to us, where do we get our protein? So quinoa is really good. And this salad truly came about because I just decided one day, I just wanna add all the foods, everything that I like. I mean, I like black beans, kidney beans, Persian cucumbers, um, red onions, avocados, bell peppers, lime, um, just whatever I liked, I decided to put in there. Now I'm gonna say that if you're not eating a plant-based diet currently, the salad or even the rice, you're probably gonna say it needs salt but it really doesn't need salt. It's just that your taste buds need to adapt. Like we, we just heard from Dr. Gershfeld that it takes a little while when you've been eating this way, your taste buds will adjust and you no longer are gonna want, you know, the salt in there or anything like that. The, the food has a lot of flavor in there. It's got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so you really, 
That's the only thing that I can guess that you might say, oh, you know, it could have used a little bit of salt, but trust me, if you hang in there with this lifestyle, you're not gonna, you're not gonna miss that. Um, so we're gonna start chopping up some of the... So the way you wanna do this dish is you're gonna pre-cook two cups of quinoa. Now, I like the tri-colored quinoa because I like all the colors in here. It just makes your salad prettier. Um, how many of you guys own Instant Pots? Wow, that's fantastic. So you know that cooking quinoa in an Instant Pot is really quick than instead of cooking it on the stovetop. So if you're wanting to cook this in the Instant Pot, it's two cups of quinoa to three cups of water for literally a minute or two minutes, however you like it. Two minutes I usually do it, and then it'll let the pressure come down naturally, and voila, your quinoa is done. And there's no, you can put in any order that you want this recipe, I mean, you know, the ingredients in here. Next we have kidney beans and black beans. Why did I put kidney beans and black beans? You could put garbanzo bean, you could put um, pinto beans. Again, it's whatever that you really like. Um, so I just decided I'm gonna go with these two beans. Make sure that you rinse and wash your kidney beans when you're taking them out the, oh, any beans out of the uh, can. Next we have Persian cucumbers, or if you can't find Persian cucumbers, you could do the English cucumber. But don't do those, you know, the, um, the big fat ones, the big fat cucumbers? Those have no taste, I'm sorry. But Persian cucumbers are delicious. You don't even have to peel the skin, just make sure you wash it really well, or the English cucumber for that matter, that's delicious as well. So we throw that in here. It's basically whatever you have in your kitchen you can throw in here, you know? Red onions, really good for us. That's something else that I absolutely love in this dish. Um, corn, you can just go ahead and defrost a bag of corn, sweet corn from uh, Trader Joe's and we're gonna put that in here. Doesn't this look pretty already? I mean, look at all the colors in here. I can't hear you. This is the quinoa salad. So we're gonna cut up a bell pepper. Bell peppers are in here. Now, do you know why there's so many different um, colors of bell peppers? Anybody? Wait, somebody said ripe. Who said that? I think somebody said it over here. Um, and you're right, whoever said that. When it's red, the bell pepper is completely ripened. But when it's green, it's completely unripe. And that's why you'll see um, the green is so cheap sometimes. And you're thinking you're getting a great deal, but you're, but you're not. It's because it's unripe. So you want to make sure that you're always buying the red as much as you can because that is fully ripe and it's at, at its sweetest point. Um, you could only just put the red in here, but I just think it's really pretty when, with all the colors to have them in here. The orange is not as ripe. The red is, is at its fullest, yeah, yeah it's, it's completely ripened. In fact, I, when I first started this, um, I started as a raw foodist. I was going to Optimum Health Institute in San Diego. I'm not sure if any of you guys are familiar with OHI. Um, but they had a garden outside, and at first I didn't believe it because I thought bell peppers, they came in green, and then it came in yellow, and then it came in orange, and then it came in red. And they're like, no, that's not how it works. When, it, when the bell pepper is growing, it's first green, and then you'll see it. You'll, it'll start to turn yellow, and then it'll start to turn orange, and then it starts to turn red. And so when I, I'd be walking daily out into the garden, and I'm like, oh my God, they weren't joking. That, that really does happen, <laughs> you know? So this all along, I've, I had been eating unripened uh, bell peppers. And that's not good. We want our food to be at its peak. So 
But you know, you can you can add the yellow and the orange. It's not I, the only thing I don't buy is the green. I refuse to buy the green bell peppers. The other colors I will get, but that I won't. So that goes in, and we're going to put the. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and ask me questions as I'm doing this. It's not a. Sure. So. I started this plant-based um, journey back in January of two, January 12th of 2012. In fact, in June, when you guys had Healthy Taste of LA here, I came here and that's where I met Chef AJ, I met um, John Pierre, I, you know, I learned more about plant-based and all that and I thought, wow, that's, that's just a program for me. Now mind you, I was extremely overweight. I had um, high cholesterol. I was pre-diabetic. I had high triglycerides. And the doctors had told me that it would take Herculean efforts for me to ever lose weight. Now, what doctor says that to a patient? I mean, seriously, talk about pushing me over the edge and feeling all doom and gloom and, and you know, going, oh my God, I'll never lose weight. Well, I'm a true believer that, w that when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And sure enough, I was lucky enough to have found two wonderful people that introduced me to this way of eating and to follow this path. I have been following um, John Pierre and Chef AJ's program for the last seven years. I have lost close to 120 pounds, and I have kept it off the entire time. Um, I have gone to True North Health Center s since, Jan since the 2012 because I decided that I want to go to places that promotes and um, teach me about this way of this way of living and I want to be with like-minded people so every Christmas um, I go up there for the health extravaganza and I come to places like here at this fabulous church that you know does all these wonderful cooking classes and I've never looked back because I have never felt better in my entire life as I do right now and the best part is my mom's doing it, my aunts are doing it, my friends, some of them are doing it. And I guess I'm also doing it because what you guys don't know is I lost my uncle to gastric bypass surgery. And that should have never happened. That was, no one should have to go through surgery, no one have to go, has to go through that kind of an extreme surgery or even any kind of, you know, lap band or I don't know, those gastric sleeve, but he, died three weeks after the surgery. And to this day, I wish, I just wish that he was alive so that I could teach him, like, there's another way, there's another, you know, there's, there's something else that we can do. But unfortunately, he's not alive. But out of respect for him and the love that I have for him, I am so determined to get the message out to people and I'm so determined and focused as to living this lifestyle because you really need to have a laser beam focused. None of us need to be on any kind of medication. None of us need to be supporting the pharmaceuticals. If anything, we gotta take control of our health again and we have to teach our doctors that there are other ways, that we don't have to be you know, taking this medication for this thing and then this other medication for this thing. And those medications, what are they doing? They're just hurting us. They're not, they're not helping us. Um, in fact, it was Dr. John McDougall. I went to his 10-day um, program and I, like I said, I was on all sorts of medications. And he goes, well, guess what? I'm taking you off all medication. I'm like, you can't take me off these medications. He's like, well, what's gonna happen to you? I'm like, heck, I don't know, but I don't wanna find out. I, my, my doctor put me on these. He's like, don't worry about your doctor. I'm your doctor now. I'm like, uh, okay. So I was there for 10 days. He took me off of everything. But he did tell me, he goes, you have to truly follow this way of, of living. Now, luckily for me, I absolutely love this food. 
Like the food has, it, it, it tastes fabulous to me. It tastes wonderful. When I go to somebody's house and, and they've added salt to the food, I think it's the most disgusting thing. You know, it's like, to, why are you torturing me? And no. So he took me off all the medications and here lies my problem. I thought, okay, well, I have to go back to see this doctor. What do I say? What do I do? He goes, don't worry about it. I'm going to teach you what to say and what to do with your doctor. And I said, all right. So he gives me everything. He gives me all the tools. He gives me all the reports and everything. Three months later, or I don't know, maybe it was six months later. Now, my mom and I see the both, we both see the same um, cardiologist. And my cardiologist is actually really a nice guy, and he's into, you know, he likes the whole holistic stuff. But, you know, he, he will prescribe medication, blah, blah, blahs. So what he had done six months prior to me seeing him, um, he had upped my medications. And in fact, he had upped my mother's medications. And, you know, we didn't tell him anything. So we go to see him, and he comes in all smiling and just happy. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? He goes, oh, my God, you, you and your mom look so good. You've lost some weight. And I'm so proud of you guys. I said, really? Why are you proud of us? He goes, see, I told you the medication with a higher dose is going to be good for you guys. Look at, look at your numbers. Your numbers are wonderful. And I'm like, um, yeah, we need to have a little serious talk. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, um, how do I say this? Yeah, we haven't taken your medication in six months. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he was going to keel over, seriously, because... I took it upon myself to take my mom off of her medication. I'm like, well, if Dr. McDougal could do it for me, I could do it for her. I know exactly what he did, right? So why not? I took mom off too. And then he looks at my mom and he says, wait, are you not taking medication either? She goes, nope. And she goes, well, who told you to do that? She did. <laughs> I'm like, uh, thanks, mom. Throw me under the bus. But... Um, so I'm like, well, let me ask you a question. He goes, what? I said, isn't it true that the medication that you're giving me to reduce my cholesterol is in fact really not helping the cholesterol, but it'll make my numbers look really good? But maybe just a tad, tad bit, it might help the actual cholesterol itself? And he goes, well, who told you that? I'm like, it doesn't matter. Is that true? He goes, well, yeah, kind of. And I'm like, huh. So then why should I take it? He goes, because, I'm like, and she goes, well, let's read your numbers. I'm like, okay, let's look at them. My numbers were actually all coming down. He was so impressed. And he turns to my mom and he, he says, what is she feeding you? Oh, potatoes. He about had a stroke. He tells her, you cannot be having potatoes. Well, why can't she have potatoes? What's wrong with potatoes? Oh, they're high on the glycemic index and her sugar levels and this and that. I said, really? What's her sugar? Oh, it's actually normal. I'm like, oh, and all because of potatoes. He goes, well, how is she, what kind of potatoes are you eating? I'm like, listen, we're eating sweet potatoes. We don't put anything on it. I said, the worst thing that we will put on top of a potato is basically salsa, which I make. I'm making the salsa so I know exactly what's going in there. He goes, all right, so you've obviously are do been doing this. You're not going to go, you know, you're not going to take any of the medication, so tell me about this diet. So then I started. Everything that Dr. McDougall had told me, I started, like, re repeating to him. And he's like, well, I want to know about this Dr. McDougal. I'm like, fine, here, let's Google him. So we brought the computer and we started Googling him. I started telling him about Dr. Esselstein, um, the reverse and prevent heart disease. And he, he actually was like intrigued. What I like about this doctor is that he never says not to do it. Like he'll, he'll humor me and he'll say, okay, well, tell me a little bit about it, we'll talk about it, and, and let me do some research and whatnot. And I said, fine. So I said, would you mind if I brought you all the books? He goes, how many books? I'm like, just a few. I'm like, you're a doctor, you should be reading this stuff anyway. 
And he, start, he starts going, Shada. And I'm like, what? It's the truth. I said, I said it, knowledge is power. Just think how many patients you're going to help. He's like, okay, okay. So what books are you bringing me? I said, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll see you in a couple of weeks, and I'm going to bring you some books. So I took him the China study. I took him Dr. McDougall's uh, Start Solution book. I took um, The Reverse and Prevent Heart Disease by uh, Dr. Esselstein. Three months later, I went back to see him with mom, and he was overjoyed because, again, the weight was still coming down. The numbers kept gradually getting better and better to the point that my mom is completely, they told her she'd never be off her blood pressure medication. You've been off of it for six years. Yeah. Metformin. They told her she would never be off of her metformin. She's completely off of metformin. She's taking zero medication. I, for one, am taking zero medication. Thank you. I refuse, I refuse to support the pharmaceuticals. And I think, really, it is our job to, it's our job to learn and to take care of our own bodies, but I think it's also important that we teach the doctors, the, te the doctors don't get that much education in nutrition. I think they get what, about an hour in nutrition? And that's it. Well, that's not enough, I'm sorry. So I'm happy to report that it's been almost seven years and um, my doctor is on board. He's actually eating plant-based. His family is eating plant-based. And he's actually, to any patient that will listen to him, he's actually teaching them how to do whole food plant-based, salt, oil, and sugar-free. So guess what? We can change our doctors. We can change. We need, all we need to do is learn ourselves really well and be the lead by example so that he, they can save somebody else's life. It's, it's been... Um, quite a journey, um, and I'm truly happy with it, and I don't think I'll ever, ever, ever go back, because I like buying cute clothes at a smaller size, and um, talk about, you know, whatever, but it's, it's, it's a lot more fun. Um, so that's that. Any other questions? Where did I get my pieces? Well, I actually, I didn't get them. Lovely Susan got them for me. Awesome. One thing I want to say about this, uh, can you guys smell the rice? The one that's, those of you sitting in towards the front? Um, one thing about this salad, which is really good, if there's no peaches, I have made this with, um, I have made it with pineapple, I have made it with mango, I have, you know, you can put any fruit, you could put apples in here, you could really put, use any, any fruit that you like. That's the beauty of it. And for those of you that don't like, I love cilantro and a lot of foods, for those of you that don't like cilantro, feel free to use parsley, whether it's the curly or the flat, it really doesn't matter. If you don't want it, I just think it's pretty to have some green in here. Um, but if you don't want to use anything, that's also fine, but it's a shame not to use anything because it'll just make the salad look prettier. How many of you are currently following a plant-based diet? Oh, fantastic. And are you guys all salt, oil, and sugar-free? Ah, the hands went down. So there's a couple of you guys, fantastic. I think oil for me was the easiest to give up, the oil and the salt. I think the sugar, bless you, the, uh, the sugar was a little bit harder, but it's very, it's very doable. So now, what I've done, because I've become so passionate about this way of eating, is I'm trying to, I'm teaching cooking classes at my house. I'm doing webinars. Um, in fact, I've got a webinar series that's going on right now, all t teaching Persian cooking, because I am Persian, and uh, I love our food, but I had to make sure that I convert it to our way, the SOS way, and uh, I also teach at the Fasting Escape Retreat with Dr. Gershfeld, which is wonderful, except for I think sometimes when 
the poor guests are are fasting. That's not fun to teach over there because I think I'm torturing them with the smell and the foods. Um, this recipe calls for fresh mint. You can put as much as you like or as little as you like, but don't overdo it with the mint because sometimes the it might just overpower the dish. So you want to chop that up really fine. Absolutely you can. This is the beauty of this dish. You can do whatever you want. But yeah, I would definitely do it. And I keep it really simple where I put uh, fresh lime and the zest. It's always make sure to put the zest in here. But if you, if that's, for some of you that are not used to eating super, super simple, you may want to add other things to it. What I have found that's, what else is good in here is balsamic vinegar. And I would, I would use the white balsamic vinegar that Trader Joe's has, because then that's not going to change the color of your salad. Um, but if not, how many of you guys use the zester and the zest of a lime? Good. It's, it, it really makes a difference in the food. It's super yummy. But any other questions? I, okay. The oil, yes. Well, the oil, you know, Dr. Esselstyn gave a really good analogy once um, at the Vegan Holistic Cruise uh, years ago that I attended. And he said, the, the lady came up to him and says, I, you know, they had been talking about how the oil is really bad for the endothelio, the, light, the lining, the artery, and all that, and we know we shouldn't be eating it. And the best analogy that he gave was, you take your favorite olive oil, which is you know extra virgin, is extra this and that, whatever, and you pour it down your sink. Well, year after year of you pouring it down your sink, what is it going to do? It clogs it up, and it gets, you know, it starts the whole corrosion uh, in, the, in the pipe. So what are you doing to your arteries? So by you pouring that into your arteries day in and day out, you're damaging them. So you don't want to use that. Plus, ladies, it's extra fat. I don't know about you guys, but I certainly don't want the extra fat to come back. And I don't want it in my food. So what's the point? And oil, does it really add flavor to your food? It really doesn't add any flavor to your food, but it will add calories and it will add the fat and it will damage the artery. So that's the reason for oil. And the problem with oil nowadays, they've got it in everything. Please read the labels, you guys. You know, a lot of labels will say it's fat free and then you look on the back and they've snuck it in. Oil is in there. Why on earth? do dried fruits like cranberries, cherries. Why do those need oil? Why, why do they have sunflower oil in them? Raisins, why are they putting uh, sunflower oil? Currants, before they never used to do it, now they're adding um, sunflower oil to it. Exactly. So we don't need it. The other day I was at Trader Joe's and I saw that they had these um, they had taken garlic and shallots and they put them in these little cubes and I thought, oh, that's a great idea. I don't have to sit there and chop up garlic anymore or chop up shallots anymore. I could just use one of these cubes and put it in. And then I thought, you know, I'm going to humor myself and just read the ingredient because it shouldn't be anything more than just garlic or shallots, right? Guess what's in there? Oil. Again. It's for the sh uh, shelf life, but we don't need it. So oil is its very harmful to us. And uh, the sooner you get off of it, the better it is. And I've noticed, like, sometimes I'll go someplace. And I've become a really good liar. Pastor John, I really apologize for becoming a liar. I want to say that up front. But when I go to restaurants, I tell them that I am deathly allergic to oil. Any kind of oil. 
And they all look at me and they're like, seriously? And I'm like, yeah, and listen, I'm, I really, I'm really sorry, but I didn't bring my EpiPen. So when you're steaming my vegetables, can you make sure there's not oil in the pan? But better yet, make me a salad, just make sure. And they're like, oh, how about butter? I'm like, really? I don't want oil. No, I don't want butter. So if you have to lie, I think God will forgive us. Right, Pastor John? <laughs> I think it'll be okay. But, but yeah, no, oil. And you know, oil is, once you give it up, you're going to notice that all the oil that's doing is coating your tongue. And you'll, you'll be able to taste the food that is fresh and is clean. And there's not, there's not nothing, nothing like no funny coating on it anymore. It does take a little time to get used to it, but I promise you. And washing dishes, guys, so much easier. Oh, it's so much. You just wash those dishes like within two minutes and it's fine. You know, none of this oily, sticky, gucky Yucky, well, you get the picture, right? Yeah, none of that in there. The other thing this recipe has is avocado, which is great. Can I have a spoon? Thank you so much. Oh, my God, this is smelling so good. So, so good. I have, um, for those of you that are interested, I have my clipboard out in front. I would love to have your emails if you're interested in hearing about classes or webinars or I do a lot of Facebook free um, cooking demonstrations on my Cooking with Shada page on Facebook. So if you'd like to sign up to be on the email list, it's right outside. I would, I would love it. Um, yeah. What other questions do you guys may have? Yes. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so I have this like this this mortar and thing at the house, and I just take the threads and I put them all in there, and I just beat it, and I just m move it around, and, and it starts to make it into a fine ground piece, and that and that's it. And then I I don't measure. I with a saffron, the more you put in, the tastier it gets. It's really good. So just a little bit goes a long way. It really does. There are these little, um, a friend of ours came back from Iran. That's where, that's where we get a lot of our saffron from. Um, when they go to Iran, they always ask me, like, what do you want? And I'm like, uh, saffron. So they, so they bring it. And um, they brought me this little, this little gizmo thing that you can put the saffron in there and, and grind it up. And it actually works pretty well. But I find that the that the mortar thing, and you can just grind it like that, it works just as well. But you don't, you don't need any, any special tools or anything like that. I'm sorry? I have, all, I, I have a little one that they brought me from Mexico, and it's like, um, like ceramic. It's nothing, nothing fancy, and that's, that's what I use. It's just something, it's literally about this big with a little stick. I think it's some kind of stone. I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of like a tan color. Probably the white one. Yeah. How are we doing on the time on the rice? Does it say? Oh, it's still going. Well, by the magic of thanks to Susan and her team, the rice, we've already got it cooked here. Now, the reason we say to have the rice at four and a half is because I want the rice to be fluffy. If you end up putting, if you end up putting too much water in here, the rice is going to become sticky. You don't want it sticky. You want it. You want the rice to be fluffy. At this point, since this rice is done, can I have the? Um, 
We're going to add the dates and the raisins to this. Oh, it's stuck to it. We're going to add that. We're going to toss this really well. And now we've got, I always pre-measure all the spices, and I've actually got some saffron in here um, that I'm going to mix it all together. Ideally, you want this rice to be still warm when you're adding everything to it. So this has been unplugged for a little while, but it's okay. And this, this rice, I'm telling you, it's absolutely delicious. And I think you guys are going to get a serving of it tonight, right, Susan? Or are we just teasing them tonight? But for the seriously, I just on a serious note, for those of you that are contemplating, you know, whether uh, as to adopt a whole food plant-based diet, salt, oil, and sugar-free, I highly recommend it. It is so life-changing. It is so, you will feel so much better. And I, to this day, I, I really do wish I could find that damn doctor, excuse me, sorry, um, that wonderful doctor that told me that it would take Herculean efforts for me to ever lose weight, because I can show him and say, look what you did to me. You, you, I seriously thought I had given up. I was so sick and fat and miserable and depressed, and I had seriously thought I would never, ever, ever get to my ideal weight. And I would love to find him so I could prove him wrong that I could do it and I didn't have to take any goop or mm, liquid proteins or, um, I don't know, these powders and diet pills or anything like that, that it could be done and reversed my health, got healthy. So if I could encourage anyone to do this, please do it. It's not... What, what's wonderful about this way of eating is not even so much the weight loss as it is the freedom that you get, the freedom from being addicted to the salt, to the oil, to the sugar, to this mad, crazy way of living that, you know, we have to eat, you know, all this dairy product or this meat product or this, all this high fat. And the weight loss is truly a side effect of eating this way. So if I could encourage anybody, I would highly recommend this. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a great way of, of living. So I, I hope that you have, I don't want to keep, here, keep you guys here too long. I hope that you've enjoyed this cooking demonstration. I hope that you will enjoy the food. And I would love to talk to any of you, anybody that would like to after class. And I hope to see you at more of these conferences and more of these cooking classes. And thank you, Susan, and thank you, Pastor John, for having me here tonight. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you.